222 day, we will talk about SHX, its ties into JPM, XRP, and in particular, ODL and ILP, XLM, because of its IBM connections and USDC connections, and some XDC because of our three Corda connections between XRP, SHX, and JP Morgan. And I want to concentrate on the ties in between Stronghold and JPM. So to kick this all off, there is an old video that is from SHX that shows a coin with the XRP logo on it. And it says, we make sure to connect it all, which ties back into the integration in between SHX and XRP because of the ILP. I have tried to look into about half of the topics on here from Crypto Banker SHX, and I have been able to find a whole lot, particularly around JPM, and I've got more information on that that will be coming out that goes impressively far. But at the moment, I want to talk about SHX and its unspoken ties into large, large enterprises and governments. And that's primarily because these fintech companies are not able to come out and say a lot of what they are actually working on right now because of NDAs. And the large, large enterprises don't want anyone to talk about what they are doing with them because it's all about competition. Here we were talking about SHX and ILP integration, and that's the reason why it works with the interledger protocol so well. That is the reason why it was created by the developers of XRP, which is a comment on SHX. So I have a couple of clips that explain a lot of where this is headed. We configured our technology in a way that really fits the problem of cross-border payments liquidity very, very well. So for the cross-border payment challenge, we've created an open internet model. We call it the idea Interledger. So Interledger, like the internet, supports our Ripple technology globally. And that model does not require a single universal common blockchain. It requires a very open blockchain interconnectivity. And that means that the volume is theoretically infinite. It's not the, the internet never runs out of um, capacity. Elements do, but the internet still works because it's inherently decentralized. So Ripple is the same. Through a decentralized model, it is infinitely scalable. Supporting that, we have our liquidity proposition, which uses XRP, and that's a classic blockchain. But XRP was designed from the outset for transacting. So unlike the likes of Bitcoin, which is like very slow and slows down as you, as you continue to build on volume, the XRP model is very, very, very high speed and very high capacity. So the liquidity part is very adequately served by the XRP model. The wider network we're creating, where if you're really going to create something of value for 7 billion people in the world of 9 billion by 2050. And here is a quick explanation of how powerful that the connections of the ILP are. So I, I let, some people have heard me say this before, but I'll throw it out to the audience. What is Interledger's total addressable market size? All the money. <laughs> nope. And that is important because from May of 2019, we have an article about how Stronghold integrates with the ILP. So now we move into how this actually connects SHX indirectly, or in my opinion, it's more direct than indirect, indir but how it connects JPM to SHX. And we've got JPM is connected to ODL and accounts for more than half of all ISO 222 transactions globally and had a presentation highlighting Ripple with market makers. And this goes in the face of a lot of what is in the public eye about the relationship in between JPM and Ripple. And I'm one that thinks that a lot of these comments made in public are meant 
to hide what is actually happening. So here we have in Ripple documentation that the following payment outlets are supported by ODL and that goes right into JPM Chase. And we can see here that it is talking about that exact information and this does come from jpm here is an explanation of how important that this actually is because jpm is the majority of the current correspondent banking system and how the blockchain transformation can only happen with them in charge what i'd also want to call out on this page is about halfway down you can see jp morgan chase and it's ironic, we think, that uh, JP Morgan Chase has actually gone the furthest in offering uh, blockchain-based and crypto-based products to its own clients, despite the fact that its CEO is very visible in, in, in raising issues. Um, what, just why there's a disconnect between what the CEO says and what JP Morgan Chase is actually doing is, is for someone else to explain. Uh, but we're very impressed by the, the progress of JP Morgan, which is actually also uh, sitting under and helping trade uh, this new wave of Bitcoin ETFs. And I am one of those people who likes to explain why Jamie Dimon's comments are meant as a distraction to keep people out. So now for more on, and now to go into how SHX is connected into JPM. I came across this a while back. I just didn't know exactly what to do with it at the time because I didn't have a lot of information on it. But we have a connection between XDC and JPM because of their quorum platform. And if we go back into R3 Corda, that would make sense because it does connect XDC and Ripple and XRP by way of SBI R3. And R3 Corda, SBI R3, Impel, TradeFinex, and the XDC network are now involved in a 100% official JV in Saudi Arabia, which adds even more credit to that tie. And here we've got R3 Corda, Quorum, and IBM involved with a CBDC. And as we know, there are a lot of ties with XDC into that end of things. But the important thing here is the tie between R3 Corda and Quorum, because that makes even more of a connection in between XDC and JPM. And here is what I talk about a lot, but the R3 and XRP conversation that has been out there for a long time that has gotten a lot of crap off of a lot of very large accounts is a very real thing. You cannot argue that there isn't any connection between XRP and R3 at this point in time, in my personal opinion. And here is a live example that shows the inherent importance of XRP to R3 Corda, which came from Mr. Man XRP's post that goes back to November of 2023. There are some financial ties to JPM and SHX as well by way of First Republic Bank, Coinbase, and USDC. In March of 2023, when First Republic was one of the financial institutions that went insolvent, they got acquired by JPM and they took over all of First Republic's assets. Now, why is that important? Well, there are a lot of ties between SHX, Coinbase, and USDC, as I have explained in the past. And that also ties into BlackRock as well. And that is because of the connections of BlackRock into Coinbase and USDC. USDC is BlackRock's crypto cash. Coinbase is BlackRock's custody. And ETFs are BlackRock's derivatives. 
once they acquire enough Bitcoin in their ETFs, they will effectively have control of all of the derivative products afterwards. And we have here that BlackRock uses JPM's chain. And all of that ties back into what I just explained about the connections in between SHX, XRP, and XDC because of R3 Corda and how it connects XDC and XRP, which then goes into SHX because of the ILP integration. Also, one of the key partners with SHX is Bancorp, and BlackRock is one of the primary investors in Bancorp, which just makes even more ties into all of this. And just one note on the actual technological side that ties IBM into all of this. PAX 008 is the MX data rich messaging, which will be used by banks beginning in Q1 of 2024. One of four codes that, be, that can be included is CLRG, which shows that the payment has been executed with the RTGS, the real-time gross settlement system. And all of this ties back into SEPA going live in March of 2024.